dateline is 2012. England is in the grip of a new regime of terror. Traditionally a land of brave heroes and great statesmen, Nelson, Wellington, Disraeli, Churchill. Britain now labored under the yoke of a power guaranteed to strike fear into the hearts of all men. The country is being run by women. <laughs> it all started with Margaret Thatcher. Housewives all over England, delighted at her rise to power, voted more and more women in and more and more men out. <laughs> Later, the Germain Greer Nika uprising made 1984 a far more terrifying year than even George Orwell predicted. Men's clubs were abolished, gentlemen's toilets closed, creating widespread distress among thinking and drinking men everywhere. Gay <laughs> libbers naturally were the first to go to the war. <laughs> the advance of feminism was by now making itself felt in public and traditional spheres. Names of buildings were changed. The Houses of Parliament were still the Houses of Parliament, but immediately the all-woman government took over, Big Ben was renamed Big Brenda. <laughs> By 1998, the newly formed state police had established their headquarters in the old Tower of London. This historic fortress, with its grisly associations of torture and executions, had been given the name of a former folk heroine, and was now known to all and sundry as Barbara Castle. <laughs> The state police marched around the country in squads. They were omnipotent and carried all before them. <laughs> Quite a lot behind them as well. <laughs> it had become, in short, an England completely dominated by the female sex. Even the Union Jack had now become the Union Jill, a sad travesty of its former self. <laughs> Women were the breadwinners. They gave the orders, they made the decisions. They were the union leaders, the captains of industry. And the men, well, Let's start with this one. Because it has indeed been extremely difficult. Cartwright, J.W. He is employed as a tea boy at the secret police headquarters in Barbara Castle. He has a pass with his photograph on it, pinned to his overall. He lives in a two-roomed flat in Perivale, and he is the worm that is about to turn. His main adversary, everybody's main adversary, was the commander of the state police, a woman with an iron will and underwear to match. <laughs> now, ladies, it has been suggested by certain opposition factions that men should once again be allowed to revert to wearing trousers. And I can see that to you, as well as to me, this whole concept is unthinkable. They must be kept in frocks if we are to retain the control which we have fought so hard to achieve. Trousers have always been the symbol of the male overlord. Here in England, trousers were traditionally always worn by the head of the family. In those olden days, all women had an image of their perfect man. Nice strong black one for you, wasn't it? <laughs> Deep down, there was always a resentment, a spirit of rebellion which was ready at any time to burst to the surface. When our mothers and grandmothers burnt their brows way back in the 70s, what did this reveal? Nothing at all for you, as far as I remember. <laughs> it revealed that at last women, the creators of life, the protectors of the young, the guardians of the future, were ready to assume the mantle of leadership. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The master stroke, however, was to insist on the changeover in traditional dress. Once the men had to wear the frocks, they were subjugated. As soon as we took their trousers away, they were putty in our hands. Yeah. After all, what did they have left? Two lumps and a sponge finger. <laughs> On the other side of London, another downtrodden male goes about his everyday chores, only half conscious of the seeds of rebellion which are growing inside him. All right, I'm coming. Hello? 
Oh, it's you, Janet. Yeah, how are you? No, 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 not at all. No, no, just, just doing a bit of housework. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I bother either. Yes, I work and slave to keep it all clean and tidy. She just comes home, slumps down in an armchair, falls asleep in front of the television set. <laughs> just broken two of my blasted fingernails as well. <laughs> look, look, are you coming round as usual this afternoon? Well, yes, I made a cake. No, no, nothing fancy, no, just a plain one. <laughs> well, I've got to watch the old figure. I can't get into that blue dress she bought me for my birthday. Don't tell her. Right. Okay, see you later. Bye. <laughs> This morning. <laughs> oh, hello, Janet. Do you come in? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Let me take your coat. Oh. Well, how are you, Betty, old chap? Oh, fine, fine, Mr. Bromble. <laughs> Sit down. Thank you. Oh, nice cup of tea. <laughs> You've changed the curtains, haven't you? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Oh, before I forget, um, the drama club have been on and they said, would I be in this year's production again? I said, I would if you would. I presume you would, wouldn't you? Oh, rather, yes. Wouldn't miss that for worlds. What is it? Well, of course, you know they've made them change the titles of all the plays that have sexual connotations. Oh, they're not doing uh, Juno and the Peahen? No. <laughs> Moby Dillis? No, you remember the one that used to be called Little Women? Well, now it's called... Little, Little men. men. You'd be good for the lead in that, actually. <laughs> Which part is that? Uh, Arthur, the eldest daughter. Oh, it gets so complicated. <laughs> Betty, old chap, I'm in trouble. In trouble? Don't tell me John's pregnant. Nothing, no, no, no. <laughs> She's fine. No, it's just that I'm being spied on at work. For the castle? I think the secret police have heard about my collection of chauvinistic films. I'm sure the house is going to be searched any moment. Well, I have to get rid of them. Well, I can't, you see. Not before Thursday. You know, I'm having a private show in the auction rooms. And it'll be the last, because it's just getting too risky. Did you know that you can get three months' hard labour for showing a Humphrey Bogart? <laughs> so, you want me to spread the word to the rest of the lads, eh? Yes, if you would, in the secret code. Tell them Sewing Circle meets on Thursday and usual, same place. Does he mind you using his auction rooms? Who, Greta? No, he's a great chap, Greta. He'd give you the dress off his back if you asked. Right, so as it happens, I should be seeing some of the lads in the morning. Oh, really? Why, are you going to keep fit? No, having my roots done. <laughs> Cheryl. Cheryl. Susan. Give Cheryl a knock, will you? Damned old fools, as deaf as a post. Come in. Come in. <laughs> Cheryl. Oh. Sewing evening Thursday, all right? Oh, good, good. <laughs> oh, Thursday. Oh. Huh. My wife goes out with her boozing pals. Oh, okay. Pass it on, will you? Yeah. Gracie. Gracie. Oh, yeah, I can't hear these damn things on. <laughs> What the devil are you doing here, old boy? Police! Who 
who are the police looking for? Will Janet be discovered? Will the policewoman see him, or will the vanishing cream do the trick? Is Betty a man to be trusted? Find out next week in another exciting episode of The Worm That Turned.